Welcome to Black Hat 2015. I know it's a little late in the afternoon, but we've got a good speaker here for you. Uh, once again, if you haven't shut up your cell phones already, please do so now. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to Mandalay Bay BD. This is Optimized Fuzzing I.O. Kit in iOS. Please welcome Lei Long. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My talk is Optimize Fuzzing IO Kit in iOS. My name is Long Lei. I'm a security expert in mobile security of Alibaba Group. And now I'm focused on security research of iOS. In my presentation, First, it's, it's the introduction of our work, and then a dynamic approach to export information about IOK classics is given now. And this is the key point of my presentation. And then, based on the extracted information, we also craft an application to fast IOK in iOS. And at last, I will show several vulnerabilities as a result. Now the introduction. In iOS, our kit is the bridge to connect user space and kernel. And also the our kit is the foundation to construct and link a kernel extension. So the information extracting of our kit in kernel extension is crucial to fast our kit in iOS. In previous research, information extraction is mainly focused on iOS, I.O. external method dispatch, and relies on status IDA analyze. However, it has several disadvantages. First, it requires S method symbols. But S method symbols have been removed from kernel cache since iOS 7. And also, it requires a decrypt kernel catch. But even with decrypt kernel catch, there are still a lot of instruction cannot be resolved in the IDA. And even worse, the extracted information is insufficient. And now, our work is based on uh, dynamically kernel read and write, and we. Uh, can extract not only our external method dispatch, but also our external method and a series of runtime information. And what's more, we are independent of S method symbols and decrypt kernel catch. And more sufficient information can be obtained. Before our work, there are two prerequisites listed here. You need a jailbroken device and task for PID zero kernel patch. Let's begin with uh, information extraction. In this chapter, I will introduce how to extract the useful information about our kit in kernel and kernel extensions. There are four parts. The first part, basic information of all OS object subclasses, and then how to access to a specific user client, and third, our external method dispatch, and fourth, our external method. Well, the last two is used for parameter check in kernel. Now, the first part of information exception, basic information, The first question is, what is the basic information? It is the information of all OS object subclasses, and it includes class name, retable star address, virtual method, and its retable offset, symbols of overwritten virtual methods, instance size, and inheritance relationships. Here we take a class for example. The class name is 
Apple ARM um, PMU power source and the uh, bundle ID in blue uh, com.apple driver ARM um, platform and the uh, retable starting address in green instance size in yellow and the uh, inheritance relationships in red from OS object to uh, IOPM power source and the last is retable offset and virtual methods. Now the second question is why we need the basic information? First, we, we can use it as a quick search to accelerate kernel analyze. And then it's a necessary foundation for analyzing kernel without a decrypt kernel cache. But even with a decrypt kernel cache, there are still a lot of inst instruction cannot be resolved in the IDA. You can see it like that. Uh, and uh, basic information can fix it, but the retable data. And then uh, we can obtain the service provided by kernel extension and the instance size can be used in vulnerabilities exploiting Now, how can we extract the, base, the basic information? First, we need to locate all match all's data constant sessions in both kernel and kernel extensions because retable data is within these sessions. And then we need to pick out the retable data from these sessions because of, uh, by its layouts and characteristics. Now the retable layout. Retable is a series of containers from virtual methods address. So the address must be in the range of tag seven or prelink tag seven. And there are at least 14 continuous address because OS object has 14 uh, virtual methods. And at last, the number zero virtual method is following at least four or zero bytes. And now the retable's characteristic. The most important characteristic of retable is the get meta class. The, the overwritten get meta class returns a OS meta class pointer. And the OS meta class pointer is the key to get the runtime information. So, if we can identify the game meta class address, then retable is filtered out. Next, I will introduce how can we identify a game meta class address. Look at the definition of game meta class. It defines in OS define meta class and structures macro. So the implementation of game meta class in different classes is totally the same, which is the foundation to dynamically resolve and identify this function. And then inside implementation, G meta class is the key to get runtime information. Next. I will introduce how can we resolve the G meta class in kernel and kernel extensions. Okay. Uh, here is the instructions of get meta class in kernel and kernel extensions. The, they, they have a little different, but we still can resolve the G meta class by the equation in green. After locating G meta class address, now, now uh, NAS is using it to get the runtime information. In G meta class layout, what we concern with is superclass link, class name, and class size with the offer set A, C, and 10. Sorry.
Now we continue to resolve this variable. First is class name. Class name is an OS symbol pointer, and in OS symbol layout, it defines length and string, and they can form a while class name together. And the class size is an unsigned int. The superclass link is an OS meta class pointer. So we can use it transfer backwards to OS object, and we can get all the inheritance relationships. By now, we can pick out all V table data by identifying uh, game meta class, but still, but we still need to know whether the kernel extension can provide some specific service or not. For example, in order to provide the service of IO connect set serial properties, the kernel extensions service need to override set properties because the default implementation of set properties in SNU is totally empty. So we are concerned is some specific interface is overwritten or not. Here we identify overwriting by the virtual method address if the address is in the range of test segment. As, uh, then without overwriting, if not, then be overwritten. But it's not enough. Let's continue to get the symbols of overwritten methods. Now is the detailed step. Uh, first, we make an exception. The names and sequence in same iOS version are the same in different device. And then we, uh, we pick out a device with decreed kernel catch to obtain the names and sequence. So we can deduce the symbolization for those without the create kernel cache. But how can we uh, obtain the names and sequence from the create kernel cache? Here's the detailed steps. First, we use mm command kernel cache to obtain the names and address pair. And then the retable data we already obtained in our basic information extraction at last, through the name address pair matching, we can get a sequence and names. By now, we can get the basic information of all OS object subclasses. Now, the second part of information extraction. How can we access to a specific user client? By now, we can get all OS object subclasses is surely including all IO user client subclasses. And now we need to access to this user client. For example, in order to access to IOPKE accelerate user client, we need a service name Apple Samsung PKE and the open type zero. But how can we obtain this information? Here is our approach to access to a specific user client. First, input the service name S1. And then after IO object copy class operation, we get the service name S2. And we try a lot of open type in a limit scope. If a client is open successfully, then we retrieve the client name C1 in kernel through the client MAC port and client address. Now the triple C1 S2 open type is the access info we want to export. So with the access info, we can access to a specific user client. And now the detail steps. Uh, first, we, obt we obtain all service name as S1, but OS KEST load KEST in Ford expand the same as 8.1.3, so we can get the service name directly. But we can get them in our base, basic information exception. And then we try all the open types from 0 to FF, as most clients use these open types. 
In a few open type out of this scope, we need to locate the overwritten new user client address and then to analyze it to get the open types. At last, we retrieve the client name C1 in kernel, but MacPort K object is also banned as single as A program point three. Here we do find another interface, MacPoc space info to retrieve it. Unfortunately, we uh, we can get the client address directly by using MacPoc space info. As instead, we can get the IPC port pointer. And here's the detail steps. After connect to a client, we can use MacPoc space info to get the IPC info name table in the current process. And then we compare it, it's each IIM name with the client POC name. If equal, then the corresponding IIM object is the obfuscated IPC POC pointer. Since the address is obfuscated, we still need to use VM kernel app prompt to subtract it. VM kernel app prompt is a, a global variable and used many times in kernel. Next, I will introduce how to get the VM kernel app prompt and the real IPC port pointer. Here, luckily, we do find a function while virtual. It uses a Unix string and VM kernel app prompt macro, so we can Identity, we can locate the VM kernel app prompt address by locating the Unix string address. Uh, after locating the, un, the, the VM kernel app prompt address, we can finally get the IPC port pointer. And next, I will introduce how can we retrieve the client name via IPC port pointer. In IPC port structure, the K data K object field at the offset 144 is the client address. And then we retrieve the client name while the client address using the approach in our basic information exception. First, get the V table address and then locate the get meta class address and then G meta class pointer. And finally, we get the client name. So by now we can get all triple access info. So with the access info, we can access to a specific user client. The third part of information extraction, IO external method dispatch. In kernel extension, driver overrides external methods to provide service to user model. And the overwritten interface provides our external method dispatch uh, to their base class for the parameter check and, and function dispatch. If the actual parameter does not pass the IO external method dispatch check, then a E402C2 error will be returned by kernel. So IO external method dispatch is very important for our fasting parameter generation. How can we extract the IO external method dispatch? Here's the, the four steps. First, we narrow and determine the searching scope. And then we match the IO external method dispatch tables characteristic in the searching scope. So we can locate the IO external method dispatch tables starting address. And then we dump the whole table. First is the IO external dispatch tables characteristic. In a IO external method dispatch structure, 
it has five fields. Uh, the first is function. So the function should be in the range of text segment or prelink text segment. And the other four used to define the data length of in integer or structure. So they should be in the range from zero to FF, FF. Or AF means any length is okay. And then we, we make the table length should be greater than two to make the characteristic more stronger. So with the characteristic, we can identify and address whether it is the dispatch table starting address or not. Here's the detailed step to dump a dispatch table. On the left is dispatch table and V table layout of most client. First, we, we already obtained the client V table in our basic information exception. And after all continuous, all zero bytes is client method class V table also end with zero bytes. So we can locate the position as the position as is at the end of the meta class V table. And then we search from position as by by to match the characteristic. If at least two continuous blocks matching the characteristic are found, then the first block starting address is the dispatch table starting address. And then we look to dump the whole table and stop if one block does not match the characteristic. As most clients, dispatch table can be dumped in the buff approach. Here's the complemental mechanism for those unavailable. unavailable. First, we locate the overwritten external methods, and then we resolve the, all the LDR lecturer instruction in these methods. And we check each corresponding address whether it is the dispatch table starting address or not. If yes, we dump the table. The four path of information exception are external methods. IO external method is a, a structure similar with our external method dispatch. When client overrides get target and method for index to provide service, it provides our external method to parameter check and function dispatch, and also a E402C2 error will return by kernel if check failed. Uh, and how can we extract the IO external method different with different from the IO external method dispatch? We can export the IO external method by directly invoking get target and method for index. We using the arbitrary kernel code execution to invoke the get target and method for index. First. We use Mac message out of line data as a carrier. And we need to locate the out of line data we create. First is the Mac port space info and then to IPC MQ to message to IKM base to IKM header and to MSGH remote port. The MSGH remote port is the out of line data starting address. In RSA, the out of line data's metadata field has 15 2 bytes. And now I will introduce how can we use out of line data as a carrier to invoke get target and method for index. First, we craft a gadget client instance. 
and set its V table point to the fake V table data in our alpha I data. And then the fake get external trap for index points points to return index ARM instruction in kernel test. Before invoking, we set the payload in A bytes. The first four pi bytes point into the target client A, and the last four bytes point into the target client A's get target and method for index. And then we use IO connect track to to get the IO external methods address. Here's the parameters. We set the connect to the gadget client macpoc, and the index is the payload starting address in our out of line data. P1 is a writable kernel address in our out of line data, and P2 is the IO external method table index. So we can get the whole IO external method table by calling. Uh, I will connect chat two with different indexes. By now, all the contents of information exception is given now. And next is use the information to craft our fasting application. Here is our fasting application's architecture. It is based on iOS launch daemon. So it can be involved by OS on device booking. And then it includes first the panic log corrector. It corrects the panic log with the corresponding fasting parameter. And then the springboard auto unlock. It unlocks the device automatically when device booking. The deadlock monitor and slow monitor used for improve the fasting activity. And the whole system can be run without humans interaction. Before we fast, we still need to know which interface is available in the target client. Here's the fasting elements. If the client Overwriting client memory for type, then we can fast IO connect Mac memory. If the client overwriting one of external method, get target and method for index, or get external method for index, then we can fast IO connect call method. If the client overwriting set properties, then we can fast IO connect set set properties. If the client overwriting one of get ex get target and check for index or get external check for index, then we can fast IO connect trap. And also, uh, we need to identify the unavailable interface to avoid low fasting activity and frequently unusually panic. Here we use, uh, here we record three kinds of unavailable uh, interface. First is invitable panel interface and dialog interface, slowly processing interface. Now we can do the real fast. In the research, we discovered that uh, a lot of interface are dependent in the invoking se sequence. So we call this letter in a random sequence to avoid dependence. And what more, some other interface such as properties, memory map, and trap, we also add into the fast randomly. Another discover is that uh, some client don't finish its initialization before we fast, which caused the fast totally useless. 
Here we do find a way to solve this problem. We, we, we dynamically inject the fasting application into six-term process. And then we use Macapol space info to retrieve the client Macapol, which already finished the initialization. So we can fast it. After fast is our experimental results. Here's the ex experimental setup. We test on iPhone 4S and with the iOS 8.1.2. And next, I will show two vulnerabilities as result sample. The first one, function free in IO data queue. Inside the implementation, queue size can be modified in user model. And it will be passed to IO free aligned director without any check. And then in high lamp audio device user clients, client memory for type. When type is 44, then it will create a IO data queue to share memory with user client. So it may cause the buffer in K allocation 4096 can be released into bigger K allocation. Well, it's a typical buffer overflow vulnerabilities. It may can cause two kinds of panics. The first one, unavailable address to read and write to, and a free June elements has been modified. However, this, this bug has been fixed in RS APOI 3. And the second one, In the implementation of our resource set properties, uh, it can accept any key and set the key to its properties table. And our resource is inherited from our service. And then in the implementation of new user clients, uh, if the Service properties table have the key GIO user client class key, then it will use for the client's allocation. So the question is if we set the key to our resource, then what happened? Then our resource it can be bound to any client as a service. And so it's an interesting a test surface, and we can fast it with a lot of clients interface. Thank you. My presentation ends here, and this presentation you can take away an information extraction approach to extract useful information about our kit in kernel, and effective and an effective fasting framework and two vulnerabilities sharing. Thank you. You can ask any question. Uh, with me offline.